Hi again, it's Sheila with Creative Aging. So today um, we're going to make some small flower necklaces. Some of you have done the big flowers with me before. And so I thought because we're all going to be snowed in um, in Oklahoma for Valentine's Day, this might be a fun project to do while you're bored and you're watching the snow come down and um, these are always really, really fun to do and everybody likes them. So we're going to do a small version and that way you can wear it as a necklace or give it as an ornament. For those of you that haven't done the big ones with me before, feel free to do this on a large scale and then you can set it out. So the process is the same except, you know, working small is just a little bit harder. You have to use your Fingers, a little, you have to be just a little more careful. And this one, you just flatten the bottom so you can set it out. So that's the main difference is this one, you cut the bottom um, or you just flatten it, like you'll tap it after it's done to make sure that it stands. And the small ones, I mean, we'll flatten it, but we're gonna put a little paper clip in the top. And so first thing, I wanna show you how to get this part for to add a necklace. Um, basically, you're just gonna cut a paper clip in half. And you can use some sharp scissors or a wire cutter. And you just take the paper clip and you just, you literally cut it in half and you're gonna get a few of these. So you're gonna have a couple different sizes. And so if the activities director is doing this for the participants, then that this will get you two to three each paper clip. And if somebody does a bigger one, they can have the bigger loop and the smaller one, the smaller. So go ahead and get that ready so you have it for before we bake. And then so cut those in half and set them aside. And you don't need any tools today, which is nice. We're just using our Sculpey polymer clay. You don't need that much. So if you're gonna do a big one, cut that in half. And this hasn't been warmed up at all, so we're gonna warm it up together. You really don't need much today for the small ones. So I'm gonna just, this will probably be a good amount. Actually, that's still too big, but I'm going to do it because I want you to see it better for the filming, but you're, you just need less than this, I would say. But go ahead and work with that because it's better to have more and just figure out what you would actually wear, you know, what size you want because obviously these are way different. And this has a little jewel in the middle, so you can, you can add your own flair. Please do. You know, whatever you think would look pretty. Now this one does have paint around the edges. So it's got the pigment, but I added a little paint just on the edges. So, you know, you can really make it your own. So this one's still, and this one's pretty big. I feel like most people would wear this size. This is a hair big, but everybody's different. Some ladies like big necklaces. So just think about what you would wear because I want you to actually make this functional art. So now it's warmed up and go ahead and start pinching just little pieces off and go ahead and just practice with one and figure out how big your petals are gonna be. So you might pinch off a little and then just flatten it to see how big that is. So that's a petal, that's probably too big. So I'm gonna roll that up and show you So that's just a little too big. So I'm gonna cut this down. So you kind of have to play to figure out your what size you want, because we're gonna make them all the same. So I have this size, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pinch off six more um, sections about this big. So go ahead and roll it in a ball, so then that helps you figure out how they're all the kind of similar size. It's gonna be easier if you have them the same size or similar. So pinch, pinch a little bit. And it's harder to pinch this small amount. That's already a little bigger. So if it's too big, just pinch a little off, put it back on your clay. 
And then just set them aside. You can always adjust them later. We don't work quite this small very often, so it's, it takes some time to get used to, to be honest. And if there's any new people watching this, um, you know, we're, we always use the Sculpey polymer clay, mainly because, you know, the clients that we're working with are seniors. So this is the softest on the hands. And actually it's the most durable that I've found. Um, you can drop these things and they do not break. They're pretty amazing. So once it bakes, it's softer on the hand. And then once it bakes, it really is durable. It's I found it to be my favorite. I've tried other brands and honestly, it hurts my hands. So I definitely just stick with this. Okay, so I've made, just in case, I've made seven. You're gonna probably have some clay left over. Before we get the pigment out, go ahead and put that back in your bag of clay so you can use it for another project in the future. You don't wanna waste clay, it is not cheap. So. Now that you have six to seven, same size little balls, I want you to go ahead and flatten them with your thumb. And don't rush on this part. You don't want a bunch of fingernail marks, so be just very mindful of your fingernails. And I move it, I kind of move it and flatten each edge. And honestly, I like my thumbprints to be in the art for this project especially, because it looks more like a flower petal. So don't, you know, it kind of is cool that it's gonna give you a little texture. So set that aside. And flatten each one. And they don't have to be perfectly round or anything. If you do have a thumbprint or anything, I just, I mean, a fingernail mark, I just smoothed it out. So you will occasionally get them in there. Just smooth it out as you go. It's hard to smooth it out once it's all together. So smooth it out during this step. And I'm gonna go ahead and flatten all seven of them. I may not use all seven of them, but I'm just gonna have it ready just in case. Okay, so let's look at them together. I would pick the smallest one, if there's one that just is a little smaller than the rest. Uh, this one's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna pick that one and I'm going to roll it. So. Hopefully you can see it. I just leave it flat, lift up one little edge. Okay, so I just lifted an edge up like this. And I'm just gonna move my finger. I'll try to do it close up so you can see it better. Here we go. So lift it up and gently roll. Okay, so now that is the center of your flower. Now you have two sides. So you have this one and you have this one. Figure out which one you like for your flower. I personally think that one is prettier. It's got more of an, a lift and an edge. So this is the center. Now this, that part is very important. If you need to do that over again, do it a few times till you get it the exact way you want. And if you wanna even move, maneuver it you know, with your finger, if you want it to be closer together, or if you want the edges to be out, you can move it. Completely up to you. And then you take your petals, and this is tiny, so you kind of have to use your fingers and just hold it the whole time. And so then take each petal and figure out, before you squish it together, figure out where you want it. So kind of don't push it to where it's gonna stick quite yet. I want you to look at it, think about if you like it, if you like it in that place. If you do, then you can kind of 
gently push it to get it to stick together. And then you're going to go around and add it all on ed every edge. Now this part, there's no right or wrong way really. Just do it to where you like what you see. And if you wanna do a different flower than a rose, feel free to play with these petals. If you want it to, you know, be out more, push it up here. You can have the petal be out this way. You can have it close together. So play with the placement. It's gonna to totally look like a different flower if you put it here or if you put it up here. All right, so then look at it. If you like it, push it. And I like to each petal, maybe go to the edge and just push it out a little bit. It depends on how new your rose is gonna be. If you want it to be a super tight, brand new rose, then leave it kind of inward. If you want it to look like it's a little bit open, then go around gently and push around the edges. So keep doing that. Take your time. Don't go as fast as I'm going because I'm teaching a video. So you guys can pause this and take your time if you want. After each petal, before you push on it, I really want you to look at it. And I want you to think about if you want it to be closed, if you want it to be open more. This is what is gonna help you learn. This is helping you learn to maneuver clay. So I don't want you to just do it and then be done. I want you to be mindful of every single thing you do. That's gonna help you be a better artist. Keep going and then this is the point where you have to think about how much more you want. This is getting big. So if you wanted a tiny one, you might take off a couple petals. If you want it to be bigger necklace, then keep adding. So this is number seven. Well, really number six, since the first one was the center, but yeah, this was my seven. So I added all of them. If you don't want it this big, then don't add the last couple. You can, and then that would make it a very, a smaller size. Okay, so now make sure the bottom Make sure everything is kind of pinched at the bottom because that will hold it together. But these things, I mean, it's pretty easy to make them stick. You don't have to push really hard. So as you can see, it's a pretty easy process and it definitely looks just like a rose. Now, this is the part where you need to um, cut the bottom off and you can just use a knife and just cut the bottom. If you decide you don't want a necklace, you can just leave it if you want it to sit. So if you want it to sit out and you don't want a necklace, then this is the part where you just need to tap it. So you kind of tap it gently. Now be careful because you could squish the whole thing if you push it too hard right now. So I'm being very gentle, gentle and I'm gonna tap it more on my table because that cardboard just isn't doing it. So make sure to kind of tap it on your table and you're immediately gonna start seeing it flatten and then it can sit. So just depending on what you wanna do, you either need to cut it or just let it sit and see how, where I pinched it with my fingers while I was tapping. I just messed up one of my petals. So this is where you might need to fix it. This clay that I have right now is really soft for some reason. Every box of clay I buy is different. So it usually doesn't soften quite this much. So it just depends on what batch you guys have. And so you can leave it like this. If you want it to be shorter for your necklace, then just take a knife and cut it wherever you want. And you'll just cut straight down. So if you, I, it, you can use scissors too if you wanted. Here, I'll show you with scissors. I didn't bring my knife over for some reason. So if you wanted to use scissors, you're just gonna go straight down. And it, a knife would be easier and then you'll just do it against. And let your activities director do that. So see, it just comes right off. And then you can pinch it. And then you're gonna tap it again just to make sure it's really flat. 
I have a special clay tool that I usually use for this part, so I apologize. I know you guys don't have all the tools that I have at home, um, and so a knife or scissors, we're just gonna have to make it work. Usually I have a, a flat metal tool that I can do this part really easily with. So if you have that tool, I know some of you have done this and you know exactly which tool I'm talking about, but most of you don't have that at your facility or your home, so we're just gonna make knife and scissors work. So this is the flat edge, and that would be easy to wear as a necklace. So at this point, you can put your paper clip, so your cut paper clip, figure out which way you would want your necklace to hang. You know, do you want this to be the top or this to be the top? It's up to you. And make sure you have it the exact shape that you want before you do this part. So I'm gonna move my petals out just a hair. And I think I'm gonna do mine right here. So once you figure out where you want your necklace to be the top, take your paper clip, gently push it kind of in the middle, just push down. Okay, so there, I've got it in a little bit. Gently push down until you don't need a huge hole. We're just gonna put a little string in there. So that's probably good right there. And I'm gonna show you from the back. Now you can leave it wide, of course, if you wanna use your pigment. Figure out what color. Now some of you have the gold and you also have the silver. It's kind of a white. That's what it's gonna look like. So if you have that, you can use that. Gold and silver is always pretty. Okay, that's the gold and that's the silver. If you have this cool set, with tons of colors, then you can do whatever color you want. Just pick it out. You guys know how to do this part. So this, this set is really great. If anybody wants to buy it, it's about $25, I think, and it's Pearl X Pigments. Um, this comes with tons of colors. Let me show you up close. This will last you for years. You don't use a lot of pigment and it goes a long way. So you're, you can definitely buy this if you wanted to have lots of variety. And I'll just do a new color that I, I don't use very often. So let me think. Let me think of what color would be good. Because I've got some blues and I never do this one. This is kind of like a dark burgundy. And, or I'll do this red. So I'm gonna take both of these out and decide. And get your paintbrush, not a nice paintbrush. I would get um, one of the, the not nice paintbrushes because you don't want to really use your best paintbrushes. The, we just delivered some new ones. You don't really want to use your best ones for this. Not that it will ruin it. And make sure that your clay, if you have any extra clay you didn't use, make sure that is up at this point because the pigment will ruin the clay. Once pigment's on the clay, you pretty much have to bake it because it won't be, you can't use it. The pigment soaks into the clay and it makes it really dry. And so if you try to do anything or add any petals after the pigment's on, it's just gonna be run, it won't work. So I'm gonna open both of these and we're gonna decide together what color to do. This one's kind of like a, it's a it's kind of like a red and this one's kind of almost a shimmery brown. So just think about, you know, if you have this set, what color you would actually wear. I'll go ahead since it's Valentine's Day do the red. Make sure you do the pigment part on a paper plate or this is just a thin sheet of cardboard so that I can recycle the color back into the container and that will save you some money. And just gently paint your flower. Now, be very careful when you're holding it. You do not want to smush it at this point. See the pigment? I want you to see up close. Tons of it just got in the middle. I'm not going to need any more pigment. I'm going to use what I just have, and I'm going to spread it around. So I'm just tapping. And I'm tapping because I want it to fall all the way down through the flower. And I got way too much. These, it's funny, these small flowers 
you just don't realize how tiny they are till you start using, you know, just a little pigment goes a long way. So I'm gonna move this out and I'm gonna keep tapping in the middle to get some of it out to do the sides. Okay, and see I have some more in there, so I'm just moving it. I don't want loose pigment when I bake it because well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you do have loose pigment, you'll just brush it off once it's baked, but it kind of looks shinier if you smooth it out before you bake it. So I just, I just try to make myself be in the habit of using it all and making it sure it's all absorbed evenly. And if you have never used these Perlux pigments, they are amazing. You will fall in love. So now I'm gonna, you very gently set it down because I, I kind of want to get the bottom of it. You don't have to, but it looks pretty. So see, I just tap, I just put it in the pigment and I'm tapping it off a little bit because at this point I don't need much. So I'm tapping it first, then I'm moving it around in circles. Now you may have your own system and that is fine. That's just how I do it. I feel like it makes it look more even if I go in circular motion and and it also just helps it really absorb. So go around and then make sure to hold, make sure the top looks good. And at this point, it is ready to bake. So if you, hopefully your oven is heated up, you want it at 275 like always. The instructions are on the box of clay if you need to ever look that up, but it's 275. Bake it for, mm, these are small, 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes. So just lay it. I would put foil down on your cookie sheet, lay it flat on your cookie sheet and bake it. When it comes out of the oven, please do not touch it because you want it to fully cool before you touch it. The only time these are gonna break is when it's cooling. So let it cool all the way. And don't use dirty fingers to do this part, but I'm going to. <laughs> so go make sure your hands are washed from the pigment. And then you can add your string. So after it comes out of the oven, and notice this one is too, too high up. So it's not gonna be that pretty. This one looks way better. So see how, how much more I push this in, it looks better. When you get your string, any kind of string, this is some gold stretchy elastic cord that I already had cut. Put it, so take it, fold it together. Okay, so two, both of the ends are on one side. And I want you to take the ends and put it through the paper clip hole, okay? So both of the ends of it are through the paper clip hole. Grab them with the other finger. This side is open. I want you to just go through it, okay? Pull that. And this is your necklace, okay? So then you can Tie this, double knot it, and it's already on its elastic necklace. Now, if you don't have elastic, then just make it way bigger. So make it to where it goes over your neck. So you can use any kind of string, ribbon, lace, whatever you want for this part. You can use whatever you have, but that's how you put it on. All right, and then it just creates a little knot, a little nice knot, and it's gonna stay like that, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have any problems. And then you'll just double knot it, whatever length you want. And if it's gonna be an ornament, you can make it an ornament too. And there's your pretty little rose necklace. I hope you have fun with these cute things and I hope you love it. You could make a couple if you wanted. Maybe keep one for yourself, give one to someone else. Feel free to check out the detailed lesson plan if you need to. I will have some more pictures. And you know, if you do want to do a bigger one, 
If you've not done the bigger one yet with me, then make it bigger. Just make, do whatever you would like to have most. All right, thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye.